a little press. All right, so we're gonna do another problem here where we got this picture, sorry, one second, which shows a spherical uh, object surrounded by a spherical shell. So it's hollow in between. Now, this looks just like uh, your homework problem from Gauss's Law, but this one's different. Um, here we're saying the inner sphere has a total charge Q. The outer sphere carries a charge negative Q. And again, that's just like the homework problem, except in the homework problem, these objects, the, sh the sphere and the shell, are both um, just insulators. And so the charge is uniformly distributed through them. Whereas in this problem, we're going to say that both of these objects are conductors. And so, you know, it's a static situation. And so uh, we know that the electric field inside a conductor is zero. So uh, this will be a little bit easier than the homework problem. But uh, let me read what we're trying to do. Um, so we want to find the electric field at locations within the sphere, between the sphere and the shell, inside the shell, basically the electric field everywhere. So let's look at the four regions for R less than A. We want to find the electric field here. And again, this one's actually going to be rather simple. We can draw a Gaussian sphere centered at the, uh, the center of our conductor. And we know that the flux through that Gaussian sphere is zero because we are inside a conductor. And so the electric field, I'm going to write this differently actually. We'll do one of these things where we look at all four of our regions. So yeah, uh, if we're inside that inner conductor, we know that the electric field is zero everywhere. And so the, uh, chart, the, uh, the flux through that is zero. So the total charge inside that Gaussian sphere is zero. Now, I think we've done enough Gauss's law so that I can say without too much explanation, uh, in cases of symmetry, so hopefully we know what we're talking about here, Gauss's law would then just be epsilon naught Ea equals Q. So what that means, you know, in cases of symmetry, that means that the flux is just E times N. So again, the, the E dot dA reduces to E times dA, and the electric field is constant. In that case, uh, Gauss's law reduces to this. And so the electric field is Q over epsilon naught A. So if we look at this inner sphere, we're looking at this radius r less than a, uh, the charge enclosed is zero because the flux is zero. And so the electric field everywhere for r less than a is zero. Again, it's just we're inside a conductor, so we know the electric field in these static circumstances has to be zero. So I probably over explained that. Uh, yeah, logically that didn't even make sense. We use the fact that the electric field is zero to show that the flux is zero to conclude that the electric field is zero. Uh, kind of went in a circle there. So we can just say the electric field is zero because it's inside a conductor and there's no moving charges. Okay, so let's move on. Let's look at, um, R 
are between A and B. So let's draw our Gaussian surface with some radius in here. Now the, the entire inner sphere is enclosed in this area. And so the charge inside is just Q. So, uh, and the area of this sphere, again, we're only going to be dealing with spherical surfaces here. So the area is always going to be 4 pi r squared. So again, for this problem, we're going to get this result. And so, uh, yeah, that's what we have. We have Q over 4 pi epsilon dot R squared in that region where R is between A and B. Now, what about the charge outside? Again, that does not contribute anything to the flux. All right, now we have to look at this region. Um, between B and C. So we know that the electric field inside here is zero. So, yeah, let's stop there, it's zero. Yeah, we're inside a conductor, so that has to be zero. And then on this outer shell, like if we're outside of the uh, shell entirely, then uh, like say R greater than C. So we've got this uh, Gaussian surface here. The total charge inside is zero as well. So basically what we found is the only place the electric field exists is in that region between the sphere and the shell. Now let's add a little bit to this problem. Let's look at the charge distribution. Like how are charges distributed here? And we know that uh, the total charge like inside, like at any point inside the conductor. So let's say this is a conductor we look at some point inside, we can always draw a Gaussian surface where the, you know, that's completely enclosed in the conductor where the electric field is zero. So the net charge inside must be zero. So we can't have any charge inside the conductor. So if the inner sphere has a charge Q, where is that charge going to be? It's going to be on this outer edge. So that the total charge Q has to be distributed on that outer edge. Now what about this charge minus Q on, you know, I'm going to redraw this whole picture because it's, we had too much going on. I think the first picture was better, more spherical. So yeah, this radius was A, that radius is B, that radius is C, and we found that there has to be a charge of plus Q on this, uh, the surface of that inner sphere, total charge of plus Q. Now what about that minus Q that's on the outer shell? Again, if we draw a Gaussian surface like this, I'll draw one more Gaussian surface here. That won't clutter things up too much. We know that the flux is zero because the electric field is zero everywhere in inside that shell. 
And so the total charge enclosed in that red sphere has to be zero. So all this minus Q has to be distributed on the inner surface of the spherical shell. And the outer surface of the spherical shell is uncharged. So there's no charge building up on the outer shell. Because uh, these, two, these are equal charges, Q and minus Q. And so the total charge has to be zero. And again, there can't be any charge inside the conductor itself, only on the surface. And so if we have plus Q inside here, to get a total of zero, we have to have minus Q on this inner surface. And so the total charge left to distribute on the outer surface, there was nothing left over, so that would be zero on the outer surface. So we found the electric field everywhere, and we found out how the charges distribute themselves. And uh, yeah, it's all based on the idea that the electric field inside a conductor in a static case is zero. That the charges move themselves around and distribute themselves until the electric field is zero, because they're free to move around inside a conductor. So if the electric field wasn't zero, then charges would keep on moving, and then they would keep moving until they canceled out those internal electric fields. All right, so uh, yeah, the only place the electric field exists is in between, and we have electric fields here, from positive to negative. And basically it just acts like, uh, in this region, it's just Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared, uh, just like a point charge at the center with a charge Q, whatever that happens to be. All right, so that'll be it for this one. And, uh, yeah, I think that might be it for Gauss's Law right now. So we'll go on to electric potential next.